protection of New York City's water supply. Uh, let's assume for the moment that it worked in a physical sense to protect New York City's water supply. But what's going to happen when, for example, right now, we're having, it looks like we're on the way to, to a drought this year because there was uh, hardly any snow upstate, and so there's very little runoff. Uh, the, the Delaware River right now is uh, as low as I've seen it in the years that I've been going up there. It's incredibly, it's, the, the water flow is very low this year. That impacts water quality downstream. If fracking were, were to come to the basin, and on top of that you had uh, large water withdrawals, and or uh, you had spills or other releases of toxic chemicals into the river, and that's going to affect the uh, withdrawals of places like Philadelphia, Trenton, uh, the rest of New Jersey, etc. And so when that happens, the only way you're going to help those communities is to release the water from the New York City reservoirs. That's obviously going to be not very popular with New Yorkers because that it, you, a part of what makes for high water quality is having lots of water in the reservoirs. Um, so uh, it's it's going to. If, if we go down this road, you can bet that there, this will become a, a major political issue between the states. And the bottom line in that clip is water shortages. So we're talking toxicity in food and water, we're talking shortages in food and water, and I know that some of the uh, kind of proactive New Yorkers are, you know, thinking, oh hey, we'll just grow rooftop gardens and, uh, you know, that'll make all the difference. Well, you have to water the gardens. <laughs> You know, where's the water coming from? So, you know, we can't afford to let go of our upstate water and sustainable agriculture thinking, you know, we're just going to do it with a rooftop garden. Any other comments on, on the, on well, the economic? Say, uh, people, uh, the opposition often says that there's um, extensive water use in other activities as well. But this is a very critical uh, differentiation to be made here. The water that's used for hydraulic fracturing, which is billions and billions and billions of gallons of water, trillions of gallons of water, it's consumptively used. That means it can't really go back into our water system because of the level of contamination that occurs. So if, even if you're watering a golf course or you have a subdivision or anything like that, that water actually still percolates back through our water supply system. This is taking trillions and trillions of gallons of water out of our water supply system. So. Yeah, I mean, again, I just want to reiterate something I said earlier, but we're looking at 100,000 wells in Pennsylvania. We're looking at about 77,000 wells in New York. Each of those wells use anywhere from 3 to 8 million gallons of water that is permanently removed from our water supply. Per, yeah, I'm sorry, per frack. And so a well can be fracked uh, several times. So, you know, it's just important, I think, to understand this. So aside from the industrialization of some of the most pristine areas uh, and the loss of things like, um, besides our real estate values, which we've seen uh, drop to be 10% of what they once were in Pennsylvania, uh, you know, aside from the fact that we're going to kill our um, tourism industry, our winemaking industry up in the Finger Lakes, our, our breweries, the Oma Gang Brewery has already said they're going to leave the state if they start fracking with our water. Um, and the impacts on our food shed, um, you know, it's just, the, it's, it's pretty unimaginable. So on the water, one of the things I often will say is that there are quite literally hundreds of reasons not to do this practice. Any one of those reasons would be, in a common sense world, sufficient reason in and of itself to not do this. Um, but we don't just have one of those reasons, like the water. We don't just have another one of those reasons, like all the jobs that are existing that we're going to lose. right? But we've got hundreds of these reasons. Uh, and it's unfortunately just these kind of corporate entities uh, and the local landowners that stand to make a buck or two that are actually driving this whole thing forward. It's, it's very unfortunate. I think that's an excellent point. Um, you know, the, the other thing, let's switch gears now and just talk a little bit. What? Hello? Um, yeah, I don't know if any. It, it's let's just switch no, no, gears people. and talk for a second about what the status is in. Okay, let's talk a little bit. 
little bit. Let's switch gears and talk about the current status in New York State. Uh, in other words, is this something that's kind of uh, could maybe potentially happening in the far distant future? Is it being adequately prepared for in study? What would be the capacity of New York State to regulate this practice? Is it possible to do it safely here in New York State? What is the course that we're now on? Well, um, New York State is in the process of doing what they're cons cons calling an, e an evaluation. It's a supplemental generic environmental impact statement. It's hardly actually an impact statement. Um, there were over 65,000 comments made by public citizens to New York State talking about the studies that should be made. Um, but just I'll point out one, that there isn't a health impact assessment being done in New York State. There have been thousands of people, tens of thousands of uh, people around the state, probably 100,000 letters or more have been submitted asking our senators and, and uh, assemblymen to um, have an order, a health impact assessment done in New York State, and still we can't get a basic health impact assessment done on an activity that poses the greatest risks New York State has ever encountered. 